Hello, my name is Caroline, and in this video, I'll show you how to make your own status indicator light. Now, you're probably wondering why I would need a status indicator light. With the global pandemic, a lot of us are working from home with the spouse and kids in the next room. Wouldn't it be great if we had an indicator outside of our office that let our kids know when we are in a meeting and not to disturb us? That's assuming they actually heed it. Now let's say I have a spouse in another room and I need to let my spouse know when I finish with a meeting so that we can have dinner. What I'm going to show you today is a simple status light indicator where I can change the color of the light from a browser window on my desktop. I've included green, red, yellow, blue, pink, off, and a random color. For example, blue could indicate you're on a phone call and pink could indicate you're on a video conference. That's why I did so many colors. Now, if you're interested in making a status light for yourself, let's get started. Now, I want to caveat this project that this is a soldering project. I do not recommend this for children or anybody that doesn't have previous soldering experience. I would not do this project as a very first soldering project. The pins are very close together and soldering is very, very hot. Take whatever disclaimers you need from this video and please be very, very careful with your soldering iron. Let me go into the materials that you'll need for this project. I used a Raspberry Pi Zero W and I did solder on all of the pins and I'll show you a quick little video about that. I have a unicorn pea hat from Pi Moroni. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this correctly. And this was a soldering project. I'll show you how I soldered that together. Then you'll need your micro SD card formatted for the Raspbian operating system. I'm actually going to use Raspbian Lite in this tutorial because you just need to run a few scripts on it. I only recommend doing it this way if you are familiar with terminal commands. Otherwise, just go with the regular Raspbian operating system. And then last but not least, this piece is of course completely optional. This is a diffuser hat that I put on top of the unicorn hat and I've 3D printed this. You can also buy a diffuser hat, completely optional and it's just for aesthetic purposes. And I had two M 2.5 screws and four accompanying of these uh, nuts uh, as well. And I'll show you how to assemble all of that right now. And here's our unicorn hat. And it does open very easily, just like that. Take it out, and there are just two pieces. For the unicorn P hat, we have to line up all the pins, and then we want to solder it in place like this. How do we do that? Let's get out a piece of tape, and I'll just tape this in place, simple as that, and then we are not going to solder through these wires. We're just gonna solder on the edges, and then we will take off the tape and then solder the rest of it together. Then we remove the tape. And there we go. I've soldered on all 40 pins and we are done with the soldering part of the unicorn P hat. And we are done soldering on pins for our Raspberry Pi. Try not to bend the pins. There we go. Now we've got a Raspberry Pi Zero W with headers. Now that I have finished all the soldering I need to do for this project, let me show you a quick hardware assembly. Now I've got the unicorn hat and it is soldered in place. I'm gonna match up all 40 pins on my Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now I've got my Raspbian Lite on my micro SD card all set up per that previous video. Insert my micro SD card. This would work perfectly and you could just power this up. Now I've gone the extra step and I have added a little diffuser on here. You could buy a diffuser, or for me, I just uh, 3D printed one, and I have left the link to the SDL file. It's on add-on Thingiverse. I've left a link to it in the description field, and uh, basically this is clear PETG filament. You could use clear PLA filament, I'm sure, as well. I've got two 2.5 millimeter screws. I have two nuts, 
and two screws and I'm gonna line that up with the unicorn hat and it creates a nice little diffuser for this project. I hope you'll like that. And then I've got my micro SD card and I'll pop it together and we are going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi with Raspbian Lite. And all I need to do is power up my Pi now. And now I've got my desktop open. I'm gonna SSH into my Raspberry Pi. It is running the Raspbian Lite system. So it's just terminal commands from here. Where I'm gonna get my terminal commands from, I'm gonna to go to github.com. I'm gonna to go to my GitHub page. I'm gonna go over to repositories and unicorn busy server. Now I did fork this from somebody else's GitHub status light indicator. And here's my page and I've added this little GIF here so you can see the different colors that are available. And I've already gone through all of the materials in this video, so I will skip that and all the prerequisites and everything. We've just completed the hardware assembly and now I'm going to make sure that I have my terminal open. If you're on a Windows machine, you will use PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y instead. And I'm gonna SSH Pi and I am in. And if I hit LS, there's nothing here. In a nutshell, what I'm doing is I'm on my Mac desktop. I have SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi because I know the internal IP address for it and my password. I will link over to another video where I do a setup of Raspberry Pi operating system light, and it is a prerequisite for this video. I'm gonna pick up right where I left off on that setup video, and we're gonna do a sudo apt get update. And the commands that I'm following are right on my GitHub page. We did a sudo apt get update. Now we're gonna do a sudo apt get install python pip. Yes, I want to continue. I'll hit the Y key, hit enter. And last but not least, I will do a sudo apt get install git. This allows us to be able to git clone in the next step. So I'll hit the Y key and hit enter. Excellent. Those are the three commands if you are using Raspbian Lite, now known as Raspberry Pi OS Lite, and we need to do that as a prerequisite before we can proceed. And I'm just gonna go straight into git clone, right click copy, right click paste, and I'm gonna git clone my repository. Excellent, I have completed the git clone. I can hit ls to see that I have created that directory. I've copied everything over. I am going to cd into that new directory that I have, right click copy, right click paste, enter, let's look and see what I have in my little directory. All right, excellent, I have all of the files I need. Now I'm going to shamod my install.sh because I will have to run an install and uh, I'm just making this an executable and that's all I'm doing with the shamod. And now that I've made install an executable, copy, paste, now I'm just gonna run install.sh and I'm going to install everything I need. Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. Perfect, we have done the install. If I hit ls now, you'll see I've got more files and I've got some executables. Now let's see if this works. sudo python server.py. Let's see if we can run that file. From here, you can test this out by going to your internal IP address and typing API on. And that is one of the API calls that you can make. And it, it just gives you a random color is all it does. All right, cool. So while we're doing that, wouldn't it be easy if we had a website that had all these different colors on there? So let's go to uh, github.com. Let's go to my file here. And I'm gonna go into Atom. You can really choose whatever you would like to choose as a file. I'm gonna hit raw and I'm going to control A, copy that whole file and then paste that file. Okay, and here is that file and I'm gonna hit control save and I'm gonna save this out on my desktop. It'll be a little bit easier and status.html is what I'm gonna name this file. So now it's an HTML file. Let's just look at this for a second. This is basically a local web page on your computer. You've just saved it 
and there are several buttons. There's a green button, red, yellow, blue, pink, off. Now the colors of the buttons aren't actually going to show. I didn't actually do any CSS. It's just the, the button is just going to say green. It's going to be the text on the button. And then when you call that button, what happens is that you, you're going to make an API call to green. And then if you press the green button, it's going to change the sentence below it to green. The change that we need to make here is where you see 0 .0 .0 .0. I'm going to hit find, control F, command F if you're on a Mac. So we're going to replace that with our internal IP address. For me, it's 0 .0 0.0.212. And I'm going to replace all. Or it says replace with your IP address. I've now replaced it with my IP address. Hit save. And now I can go to my desktop and status. I'm going to double click on status and that should open it right up into a web page, Chrome. And now press the green button, it goes to available. Press the red button, it goes to red, yellow, blue, pink. You can turn it off. And then of course there's the random color function. And I can just keep on clicking random color. Now I can take this Raspberry Pi and put it in a different room because now I'm controlling this Raspberry Pi separately from my computers. One slight problem though, when I unplug it, I'm not running this uh, terminal command anymore, right? How do I get it to start automatically? Huh, great question. Let's do that right now so that it automatically starts. Let's get back to my GitHub page and I'm gonna stop this function, control C. So now it's no longer running this commands. And let's scroll down to how do I make this work on boot? I need to copy the busy light service, copy, right click, paste, and then let me start my busy light service. Copy, paste, enter. All right, now I wanna check the status. Let's see if it actually did start. It looks like it actually started, excellent. Now let's go back to my website. Let's see if I turn it green, red. All right, it works, excellent. Going through all the different colors. It is working now. Now let's go back to my project here and for it to start on boot, I just need to enable it. Now I'm going to enable it, paste. Now if you wanna make changes or if you just don't want it to run automatically boot anymore, then you would disable your busy light service. You could stop your busy light service. You wanna make a change, restart. And so all, all that good stuff works. So I've enabled busy light service to start automatically. Now I'm doing a pseudo reboot. When it comes back to life, I should be able to just go into status and uh, change it to the color of my choice. Let's see if we're back up and running now. Yep, if I hit red, yellow, blue, pink, off, random color. And so it says status set to random color status set to available. I added this little sentence on the bottom that changes every time you change it. So when you're like, what did I set it to? Cause you're in the other room, you forgot what your status is. Then you can see, okay, the last thing I set it to was available, green. The idea is that you would just leave this up the whole time and then this would be in a different room. That way your partner, your kids, whoever would, would know what status you're at right now. Now this is manual. You'll have to have this open running at all times in order for this to work. Is there a way to do this to tie it to another service? Yes, there is. Is. And actually that is the original project that we started out with, which is where it ties in with Microsoft Teams. If you are a Microsoft Teams user, the original project was actually to be able to update your status in Microsoft Teams and have it reflected on your Raspberry Pi status light indicator here. Now, how would you do that? All right, I have on the bottom of my repository, I have a link to the original project here it is. And this is the original project and it's got all the information you need. So this goes through about half of that project and then I kind of go off on my own to make that little website. If you want to do the Microsoft Teams version, I will come out with that video in a few weeks from now or maybe next week whenever I get around to it and I will do the Microsoft Teams version, uh, which is the original version of the project. So I hope you'll join me for that. But essentially this is the project. You go into status, you can uh, change the color of your status. You put this in another room where your kids or your spouse or whoever family member can see it so they know what your status is um, while you're working at home. Or, you know, if you go back to the office, maybe you could do this in the office. I don't know. You know, I wanted to give people more options than just green and red. I was thinking, you know, if you want to do yellow, then you could assign that 
You could even say, okay, blue means I'm on the phone, but pink means I'm on a video chat call. And that is the status light. Now, if you're a Microsoft Teams user, there's a really cool tutorial, which is actually the original tutorial where you can automatically update this light based on your Teams status. I'll make a video about that soon, but if you can't wait, I'll link over to the original tutorial. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye now.